Hey guys, Perplex QT here. Welcome to my channel. So I got some interesting updates about the case that I've been following. And if you're not familiar, if you're new to the channel, I have been following the case of Mason Sisk, who is the 14-year-old who annihilated his entire family here in Oakmont, Alabama. Mason is 14, currently being charged as a juvenile. They say that that's still subject to change, that it could be tried as an adult. But as of right now, he is still tried as a juvenile. Now, being tried as a juvenile, he may be the reason why he can't see his grandmother yet. And she, he's her only surviving grandson. So what happened was on Labor Day at around 1030, this 14 year old boy from Elkmont, Alabama called 911 and said that he came upstairs from the basement and his entire family is dead. Cops came, obviously there was huge cops there on site, and after a couple of hours of questioning, they kind of felt like he was being inconsistent, so they brought him into the precinct. He then admitted that he did it. The next day, he went to the, um, he went to show the cops where the gun was, and they recovered the gun. Little has been known because he's being charged as a juvenile. But as you guys know, I did, I have been on location. I have been on site. I went to the services, which I have a really interesting thing to tell you guys about that. Um, I went to the services, paid my respects, spoke to a couple of people, and that's how I get a lot of my information. So someone showed me something today that I asked my sources and they all said it's completely unfounded. And that's that he took pictures or there were pictures found of him, um, of all the murders after he did them. According to my sources, that's completely untrue. Now, could it be that somebody, the media reported something that's correct and nobody wants to say it? It's possible, but as far as I've been told from multiple people that the family, the neighbors, nobody will even speak to the media anymore because they switched everything around. So kind of like, you know, in everyday life, if somebody's a liar, you find out they lied about one thing, then they're going to lie about a lot of things. So that's why I absolutely do not believe what the media said. So if someone saw that from the media, it's completely unfounded. And that's according to my sources. Now, the grandmother said that she hasn't seen him. She hadn't seen him in a couple of months and where he used to go over to her house all the time. My own summation is that it could be that's when he stole the gun and he felt bad. So he didn't go back to grandma's. But then again, she claimed she knew he stole the gun. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but it could definitely be a motive for him not going back to see his grandmother who he saw all the time. Now the order of the shooting, which we learned today, which honestly, I think we all kind of knew because just from the size of the dad, if you didn't take the dad out first, then it, the dad was going to get him. So I don't think he shot the kids first. He went ahead and shot the dad, then the mom, his brother, sister, and then the baby. Now, what we don't know, though, is did he shoot the kids right before he called 911? Were the baby shot immediately? And the only reason I say that is, so the dad and the son died hours later at the hospital. Now, the son was only six, so he doesn't have a lot of blood to, to lose to, in order to die, if you guys know what I mean where the father definitely, you know, can hold on longer. And I'm sure he did hold on longer, but what we don't know is the time span. We don't know exactly when they were shot because unfortunately he, that's information that no, none of us know yet. I don't even think Mason has told it yet. He's still been very hush hush. I believe due to his mental illness, cause it has been confirmed that it is a mental illness Due to his mental illness, it's probably likely why they won't let the grandmother come in and see him. Now, here's the most interesting thing of what I found out. So remember I told you guys that the services, it was all closed caskets, and I believe there were four of them, all like, you know, full size. And I kind of wondered why they had a full size, and maybe it was full size because... 
They didn't want anyone to know what, you know, what was what or who was who. So it turns out I was right. The bodies weren't actually even in the coffins. What they did was now the baby was born with the mom, but because they were afraid of people opening caskets, which I don't know who would do that. I think it's kind of vile, but they wanted to make sure that because it is tending to be a pretty high profile case and in Alabama, it's definitely high profile. And what, if he gets tried as an adult, it's definitely going to be high profile nationwide. So the media really hasn't touched on anything in the last couple of days because nobody will talk to them. So YouTubers are going to be the ones bringing you a lot of the information. And I don't mean just me. I heard that uh, Katie from MFW said that there's a big YouTuber that was actually allowed to film it. So I don't know who that is. I haven't met him yet. And I didn't see anyone at the services part. So we'll see uh, who it is. And as of right now, he is tried as a juvenile. But all right, so let me get to this coffin part. So I don't know why anybody would want to open up a coffin. But what they did say is that my sources told me that after the general public was out, then they brought in the bodies. It was an open casket. And each casket had their own, you know, had the baby, not the baby, had the two youngins, the mom and the dad. And then again, the baby was born with, was buried with the mom. So it's, I've never heard of a service doing that, but they wanted to do that because it's a high profile case. So I thought that was really interesting though. I was like, well, that makes perfect sense to me of, you know, that it was closed and all the caskets were the same size. So yeah, so my source is telling me that that's why, and it makes perfect sense that that's why, that yes, um, after when it was just family and friends for the services and funeral, it was open casket and everybody had their own casket. So like I said, I've never heard that before, but so that's the updates I have for you guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I'll be on my other channel perplexed, I'm sorry, uh, True Crime Network for kind of like a fun Tuesday Night Live and open panel for anyone that wants to discuss. Definitely go check it out. I don't want to talk about the title here, but go ahead and check it out. You'll get a good laugh. And that's it. So I'll see you guys later, and I hope you have a fantastic night. Peace out.